Hey everyone, it's Vicky Bunny Angel here, and so this video I want to talk about how I got into cosplay and conventions, since it's a very popular question that people like to ask me during my panels, um, and I thought why not share it with the rest of you here on um, Facebook and YouTube. And so let's just get started right into it. Um, it's a really awkward story. I'm really, I'm so dorky, oh my god. How I got started with cosplay starts with how I got started with going to conventions because they're both intertwined. Um, in, in high school I was a big, I'm going to say I'm a big otaku, I loved anime, it was total weeb, loved Japanese culture, I wanted to go to Japan, it was like my life dream, uh, the whole, you know, whole shebang. Anyways, but I really wanted to go to an anime convention before I graduated. So in my last year of high school, uh, I saw these flyers for a convention called Anime North in Toronto, and apparently it was a big deal. And a few of my friends in the anime club were also going, and they invited me to go with them, and even invited me to join them in their cosplay group. And uh, that was the first time I actually heard of cosplay and kind of got introduced to the idea of dressing up outside of Halloween. Uh, but it sounded like fun, because I'm a crafty person, I love playing dress up, so it was right up my alley. And uh, so we were watching this anime called Sayuki, you know, the Journey to the West um, anime, uh, in anime clubs. So it was a natural choice for all of us to dress up as characters from Sayuki. And I got uh, given the role of Lirin, the little demon child girl. And uh, she had red hair and a yellow, like, Chinese mandarin top and white cut-off pants and belts. And um, I knew how to sew basic sew, but I didn't have a sewing machine at the time, nor did I have any fabric or money to buy fabric. See, I was a very sheltered child. Maybe some of you can relate. Um, my parents weren't very well off. We didn't really live very lavishly, and I never really got an allowance. So all I ever had was money that was saved up from Chinese New Year. I would get like maybe 20 to $50 a year, and I had saved that up since I was, I don't know, 11 years old, and they were all in this little jar I kept up like from, from an empty jar of peanut butter. So that was my money jar. I had been saving up for an indeterminate amount of time for just something, and I decided that cosplay and conventions was going to be that something that I would spend my, my little lucky money on. I went to like various costume shops just to look for a wig that I could afford that was like red and frizzy and I eventually found one in a joke shop called Laughing Stuff in Toronto. And I also needed to find um, body paint to paint red stripes on my face. I ended up using lipstick because <laughs> I couldn't find body paint or I don't think I could afford it so I just stole my mom's lipstick. And I cut up my favorite pair of white jeans. I only had one pair, but I was like, you know what, for the cosplay, I can make that sacrifice. And I didn't have yellow fabric, but I knew my dad had a yellow Ralph Lauren shirt. <laughs> Maybe it was a knockoff Ralph Lauren shirt. I keep telling myself it's a knockoff to feel better about myself because I cut it up. Yeah. I cut up my dad's yellow shirt and that would became like my little mandarin crop top thing and I did all of this kind of like the night before the con and um, that was my costume. I made Lirin from Sayuki and I was actually pretty proud of myself at the time because that was my first accomplishment of making something, you know, out of my own hands. I'm now this character. So I get to the con, I meet up with my friends, everything is awesome and it just gets even more awesome to meet so many people who not only recognize what I was cosplaying as, and let me tell you, I look like a hot mess. Like if I dressed in that costume today, no one would know what I was and I'd probably be made fun of or something. But that's just how bad it was. Uh, but people back then were a lot more imaginative. You know, you'd fill in like the gaps between what the character looks like and then what the human being in front of you looks like, and you think, oh, they're cosplaying as that thing. I get it. Yeah, so so that was my saving grace. Everyone was very forgiving and very nice back then. Um, and that's how I met a lot of my friends in the cosplay community, was through that first experience into cosplay. And uh, it was amazing to be surrounded by so many people who like the same things that you did, who are on the same wavelength as you, you can gush about your favorite episode with them, um, and it was better than just talking to the same five people in anime club. 
So I was... I was floored by just how awesome cons were and, and from then on I, I was like I need to go to this convention every year, I'm going to have to start finding a part time job so I can afford it and yeah that, that was it. I decided I had to keep cosplaying because um, well my costume really sucked at my first con but when I went there I brought my little disposal camera. I took pictures of every beautiful cosplayer I ever saw. And these were people dressed in like chi outfits, bell dandy, um, my favorite like animes and stuff. There were people with like cardboard cars on their head and I was like, that is awesome! Let me take your picture! <laughs> I'm such a nerd, oh my god! And it really inspired me to actually get better at sewing so I could be like those beautiful, beautiful swans. I was the ugly duckling. And I still think I'm the ugly duckling sometimes, but I... I work really hard at pretending to be a swan and fooling you all. But anyways, where I'm going with this is conventions back then were, honestly, it felt really cozy because the population was a lot smaller and it was a great way to meet people. I've been going to cons for at least 10 years now and let me tell you, cons have gotten huge. So Anime North, the first con I went to, used to be in one hotel. Now it has moved into one of the biggest venues in Toronto and spans across like, I don't know, five or six hotels. It's like a mini city for a convention. Uh, I can't even describe how big it is, but it's literally like one of the biggest cons in Canada now. And that's just amazing to see how many fans congregate to this one spot for a weekend to, to like geek out together. Uh, but it also presents new challenges such as meeting up with friends, finding people to hang out with, finding people to eat. Um, coordinating schedules, it, it can get pretty hectic and uh, oftentimes I actually feel quite alone. Um, sometimes I'll spend some time wandering the dealer's room wishing I had someone to shop with, to chat with, or sometimes I'd be in my costume and I don't have a pre-planned shoot but I would like to get some photos and I would message like a million people on Facebook and be like, hey, are you free? Are you free? Are you free? And then kind of just like cross my fingers hoping someone will respond while I'm still in costume. Um, so yeah, these are some new challenges that have arisen with how much cons have boomed in size. And even though we have Facebook, we have Twitter and Instagram, and I use those quite heavily and it is a godsend to like pre-plan a lot of things, oftentimes you can't pre-plan everything. Sometimes you'll have a break that you didn't know you had or let's say a shoot gets cancelled and all of a sudden you're free. Oh, what are you going to do with your free time? Um, so when I heard that my friend Martin Wong was developing a new app called Shout Around and it's geared towards uh, like conventions and events and it's a location based app so it reaches people who are within that vicinity. So it makes sure that whoever you want to communicate with in your network is actually going to that convention. I don't know if you guys ever experienced this, but sometimes at a con, I have really hard time remembering who is going to this con out of like my hundreds of friends. And sometimes I'll feel bad. I'd be like, hey, um, I don't know, Bob, you ready to shoot? Uh, I'm in costume. Are you around? And he'll be like, no, Vicky, I'm at home. I couldn't go to that con. And then I just, I just feel like, but because now I've made them feel like they're missing out. Uh, but with this app, with Shout Around, you can avoid all that, that awkward, awkward little interactions. So um, it's now on Kickstarter and you should check out the link that I'm gonna post that below and see if it's for you. With this app, you can do things like shout to people in your network to see who is immediately available to, I don't know, coordinate lunch or hang out. You can message people, like PM them, essentially like messaging on Facebook or just texting them or something uh, to see if who's available for food, who wants to shoot, who wants to go to a panel with you, or who could help you get out of your costume in case, you know, your friends aren't around. Um, and just so, so many other things. And you can also follow people too. So if you want to follow uh, some like the really well-known cosplayers or people who are guesting at the con who are using the app. Um, you can get up-to-date information all in one place on your phone the same way you get information or messages from your friends. Um, you could pop up and say, oh, hey, that really super famous awesome cosplayer is going to be at the booth for one more hour doing signings. I better get there soon so I don't miss out and 
feel like I wasted my con. Anyways, there's a ton of cool features with the app. I definitely encourage you to check it out on Kickstarter. And if it's for you, that's great. Share it around to your friends, um, spread the word, and uh, you can definitely help make this thing happen. So yeah, that was my kind of introduction into how I got into cosplay conventions. I know it kind of segued a bit into talking about Shoutaround, but in the end, cons are about getting together. And anything that helps us do that easily, I think is certainly worth taking a look at, right? Anyways, that was my really short vlog. It's been so long since I've been able to talk to you guys, and I really miss it. So hopefully now that I have a new camera, you see how shiny and new this is? Now that it's a new camera, I can maybe do more vlogs like this, and um, definitely more tutorials. Because I know you guys love tutorials. Anyways, I'll catch you guys next time. Bye! <laughs>